Yankees as we continue on our postseason preview. Michael Kay joins the show. And Michael, listen, anything can happen in a series, but this one feels like it could be very well pitched, at least on paper, and maybe a run early that you scratch out or a run late will be the difference. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Well, certainly I think that's the way Cleveland has to look. Cleveland's not a high-scoring team. They're 29th in home runs. Uh, they just don't bash the ball. What they do is they string together hits. So if the Yankee starters do what they're supposed to do, you will not allow them to get four or five hits to put up a crooked number in an inning. So if you could keep them in the ballpark, and I heard what Jack and John said earlier, with Ramirez, you, you just pitch around them. Let other people beat you with a single or a double. Don't allow that ball to be hit out. That's why the matchup in the first game with Garrett Cole being the starting pitcher, if you could take one thing, that Garrett Cole struggled with this year, it's giving up the home run. So now you're facing a team that doesn't hit the home run. That plays in the Yankees' favor. Now, the Yankees do know they're going to face pretty good starting pitching with the Guardians, but I remember the last time they faced uh, the then Indians at the time. Those Guardian pitchers have spent a lot of time facing American League Central teams. The American League East is a completely different animal. Now, they did shut down the Tampa Bay Rays, a team that struggled in the month of September, couldn't get out of their own way. Can they do it to the Yankees? I think the Yan Yankee lineup is much more stout than anything that the, the Guardians face on a regular basis. Michael, you brought up Garrett Cole's name. He gets the ball in game one. How important is this game for him pitching in front of the Yankee fans during the postseason for the first time? Well, it's, it's going to be important. Obviously, everybody's looking to, you know, either support him or jump him. But everybody seems to forget, you know, he pitched poorly against the Red Sox last year in the one-game wild card. But the year before, he pitched very, very well in the postseason. So now this is year three of him being in the postseason for the Yankees. I think it was a smart move having him pitch the first game. There's a lot of pressure on him. If he doesn't perform, it's going to be the $326 million man that didn't perform. Unfair, but when you look at his numbers overall, overall, forget about the home runs. It's hard to forget about the home runs, but overall, this guy is a stud. He is the ace of the staff. He's got filthy stuff. Most pitchers in Major League Baseball would hope to have the stuff that Garrett Cole has. He's got to be focused, and he's got to put together a great outing tomorrow, give the Yankees seven innings, and then they could turn it over to the bullpen. Michael, it's easy to say that Aaron Judge, as the Yankees' best player, needs to have a great series. But when you dig a little deeper into that lineup, who would you say can be an X factor for the Yankees? Well, the guy that carried them the last time they were in any kind of extended run in the postseason is Stanton. And, you know, you could be heartened a bit by how he actually hit against the Texas Rangers. He turned around a 99 mile an hour fastball and drove it almost 450 feet. That was a good sign. For most of the last two months of the season, Jack, he looked lost. He looked like he couldn't hit a fastball. Even if it was a 92 mile an hour fastball, he was between everything. He was too far out in front of off speed and too far behind in fastballs. If this guy could step up, it's obviously twofold. He steps up, he puts runs on the board, two or three with one swing. And the other thing, it makes it a little more difficult for Terry Francona to say, we're just going to pitch around Aaron Judge. I think that would happen over the last month of the season as Aaron was chasing history and the 62 home runs. Most managers came to the conclusion, what have we been doing for five months? Why are we pitching to this guy? Until they can hit behind him, why, why not just put him on base? So if Stanton actually does have a monster postseason, I think in turn that Judge is going to have a monster postseason because it's too difficult to pitch around him when you know lurking right behind him is Giancarlo Stanton. So that's the guy I look at to have a big, big series. Michael, before we welcomed you in, we heard from Anthony Rizzo. He talked about the vibe in the clubhouse really good guys they get along do you feel that more so with this team going into the playoffs than maybe recent Yankees teams you know what I, I think that teams that win get along this team seems like it legitimately likes each other and I think that's important but you know I look at the uh, the Oakland A's of the 70s they hated each other's guts and they won three World Series in a row uh, the 77 and 70 Yankees were 78 Yankees were always sniping at each other and they won two World Series in a row I think the Yankee team that won four out of five in the 90s they actually did get along and that means something I I think that's a little sketchy I never really buy into that you know when you go on the field you want to succeed uh, you want to drive in a guy. It doesn't matter whether you like him or not. So for the most part, I do agree. This team really likes each other, and there's a vibe there. Pitch well, hit well, everybody will get along. Michael, you talked about starting pitching. I want to flip it to the bullpen. In years past, it seemed like Aaron Boone wanted to go to the bullpen earlier rather than later. I think this year he's going to keep his starters in a little bit deeper because that bullpen is a little thin, in my opinion. 
John, it's my biggest concern. When I try to handicap the postseason the rest of the way, if the Yankees are going to win their 28th championship, I, I scratch my head and who's going to close? You know, so Jack just said, you know, give me that one variable guy. Well, uh, I, I just I don't know who's going to be the closer. It's very, very difficult to manage that way. So Clay Holmes has to step up and be pre All Star game Clay Holmes because all the pressure is going to be on Boone. If you're going to manage bullpen by committee and you're going to look for lanes and you're going to bring in this guy or that guy. Well, all of a sudden, you are ripe to be second-guessed. You know, when you were Joe Torre and Joe Girardi, and all you had to do was go to Mariano Rivera, and if Mariano Rivera didn't do it, it wasn't your fault. It was Mariano Rivera's fault. But the way it's set up now, if the guy that Boone and Matt Blake goes to doesn't do the job, and it's not the conventional guy like a Clay Holmes, it's going to be on them and not on the pitcher. So I think one of the keys for the Yankees is Clay Holmes has to pitch well, and then also Jamison Tyone and Domingo Herman have to translate – the success they had in the starting rotation and make it happen in the bullpen. And Boone said today that Tyone could actually close games as well. There's just so much uncertainty there, and you can't ask starters all of a sudden to give you eight innings when they haven't been trained to do that. The one guy that you know can do that is going to be Garrett Cole. He's a horse. He can give you seven or eight. Can Nestor Cortez do that? Is Severino going to be able to do that? Because the, the, the Guardians do put the ball in play. They're going to build up pitch count as well. That's one thing they do. The bullpen is so central to what the Yankees do, and it's just an area of concern now because nobody exactly knows who's going to step up and who's going to get those final three outs. We've all seen baseball for a long time. Those final three outs, it takes a different kind of stomach than any other three outs that you get in the seventh of the sixth. Answers to those questions begin to be answered tomorrow night. Michael, will let you go. We'll see you for our coverage starting at 630 tomorrow night here on Yes and streaming on the Yes app.